Well, hey everyone. Thanks again for joining me for week two of everyone's favorite topic, a class on politics, specifically a Christian view of politics. How should we as Christians, if we're going to think like Christians, how should we think about politics? So I said this at the outset, but it's important for me to say this disclaimer again, because this is uh, kind of like playing with um, dynamite. You know, politics are one of those subjects that uh, anytime you bring it up, usually something goes horribly wrong. So um, here are the disclaimers for this class. Uh, one, we are not focusing on voting for one party over another. In fact, we're really not focusing on uh, the political parties in the United States at all. We're, we're more focusing on how are we to think as Christians about the issue of politics. Uh, number two, disclaimer. Um, we have to use examples from politics in real life. And so we want to say at the outset, the Republican Party is flawed and the Democratic Party is flawed. Uh, in fact, any political party is flawed because it's comprised of human beings who are sinful. So our hope is, as we talked about last time, not in a political party or a candidate. It is in Christ Jesus. So last week we talked about, if you haven't watched uh, last week's video, I would encourage you to go back and watch that first before moving on to this one, um, because we talked about the difference in viewing ourselves primarily as a citizen of the United States um, and viewing ourselves primarily as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven and how much of a difference that makes for us as believers when we approach the issue of politics. We will never be able to think about politics in a biblical way if our first thought about ourselves is, I am an American citizen. Before we are Americans, we are Christians first. And we will be Christians and citizens of God's kingdom forever. America is temporary and an experiment. God's kingdom is from everlasting to everlasting. So that's important for us to understand. This week, we are further fleshing out the implications of thinking about ourselves as Christians first. Specifically, we're, we're fleshing out the negative consequences that come when we view ourselves as Americans first. Because what that leads us to do, as we talked about last week, is to make politics into the ultimate thing. If we are Americans first, then politics are uh, sort of the end-all, be-all. And so uh, I want you to know, pastorally, during this election season and during every election season, my concern for you as your pastor is not who you vote for. To be honest, I don't care. And I mean that in the most loving way possible. My concern for you and for me as well is idolatry. Because when we are pulling for something, when we are cheering for something, when we are, we are backing something, uh, the temptation is for our hearts to create these little idols that we go after. And I'm not just talking about you, I'm talking about me as well. Uh, my concern for us during the election season is not the candidates we vote for, but the idolatry that can creep into our hearts because of our 24-hour news cycle, because of the way that we are inundated with opinions and things like that about politics, with how uh, charged this issue can get, even among friends. I mean, I've seen this rip friendships apart, rip families apart, rip churches apart. Satan hates the church. He hates God's kingdom. He loves sowing division. And this is prime season for that. So my concern for us, and why we're talking about politics in this class is because I'm concerned about idolatry. So this week, um, we started last week with the idea that we are um, need to view ourselves as citizens of the kingdom of God first. And if we do that, it will go a long way to fixing uh, a lot of idolatry problems. But if we view ourselves as Americans first, if we are absorbed week in and week out with the political news, and if we are heavily invested in, in one political party and, and, and viewing that as our greatest hope, right, is getting this or that candidate elected, then there are really two specific idols that tend to crop up in our lives. And so I'm giving these to us as a diagnostic because I want us to look at our hearts. I want you to know that I have found traces uh, in times in my life where I've worshiped these idols that I'm about to about to mention. So if this steps on your toes, um, it stepped on mine first. In fact, it crushed them. That's why I'm talking about it because these are things that I've had to repent of as well. Um, and so there are going to be examples from both sides of the aisle in this. I, my, my hope is that I offend everyone equally because the Word of God tends to do that. Um, but there are two specific idols during election season that I think Christians are most often prone to when we place our highest hopes in the political system. The first one is the idol of winning. It's the idol of winning. Uh, so, so 
Worshiping the idol of winning means that we view the candidate that we are supporting um, as sort of uh, our, our greatest hope. We have to win at all costs. That, that winning this election is the most important thing happening in the kingdom of God at this moment. Um, that, that, that we must win at all costs. That God's will rides on our candidate winning the election. Uh, here's what that does. Uh, so I'm going to point out these idols, uh, and then I'm going to point out what it looks like when we worship them. So, so when we worship at the altar of winning, and when that is our highest priority, that our candidate win, all our hopes are invested in them, then we tend to not see two things clearly. The first thing we don't see clearly is uh, faults in the uh, the candidate that we support. And it's not just that we don't see them, but if if winning the election is where our grandest hopes are placed, then anything negative that could be said about our candidate um, actually is is dangerous. Uh, And we as Christians tend to to couch it as dangerous to the kingdom of God, right? If God's candidate is our candidate, he must win at all costs or she must win at all costs, then anything negative that can be said about them is actually dangerous to the kingdom of God. So we tend to minimize, uh, we tend to ignore anything negative uh, in, excuse me, my phone just went off, uh, anything negative that is in our candidate. We tend to deny that it's there. And so when uh, criticism is leveled at them, when faults are pointed out, uh, we we ignore it or we minimize it and we lie sometimes uh, because we have such a high stake in them winning the election. And furthermore, not only do we not see their faults or, or we tend to minimize them, but we also view people who don't agree with us Not just as people who disagree, but people who are actually enemies and wicked. And that's dangerous. Do you see that? When we are worshiping at the idol of winning, when our candidate must win because God's plan rides on it, then anyone who opposes our candidate, we view as actually opposing God and His will. And so we don't see things clearly. danger for us in hypocrisy uh, because we minimize our candidates' uh, faults and we, we are tempted even to, to lie for them, uh, to say that things that are true about them are not true, uh, to minimize uh, their faults in some way. And so it leads us to do things to, that to others are very outwardly hypocritical. Um, but to us, because we are worshiping at the, the altar of, of, of the idol of winning, we must win. And anything that is that helps that cause, it must be just, it must be right. Even if it means lying a little bit about that candidate or imagining things about them uh, that are not true, you know, that they are better or more righteous or more holy than they actually are, um, that is that is a symptom of worshiping the idol of winning, where winning the election is, is where our highest hopes are. So anything that helps us get there, anything that helps our candidate get there, um, we can justify as, as the means justify the end because that's, that's the idol of our hearts. I see that, um, the temptation in myself, I see it in Christians all the time. We are so invested in our candidate because that's where all of our hopes are. That's where God's plan rests. And so anything that helps them win, it can be justified. Anyone who is against them winning is therefore evil. Uh, and anything that is critical that is said about them that may be true, we must portray as non-true because it might hurt their chances of winning. That's the first major idol that Christians are tempted uh, to to worship during during elections. The second one is equally dangerous, equally hard to see, and equally prevalent, and that is uh, the idol of glory. So uh, the, the idol of glory is, is simply uh, we want to be seen as being on the right side of history. We want to to be seen as backing a candidate that. Uh, that, that our culture says, yes, they are right. And you, because you are on their side, are right as well. That's a, that's a powerful motivation. We want, um, we want glory. We want praise. Uh, we want to be identified as being on the right side. And so, again, here, the, the temptations and the symptoms are very similar to the, the idol of winning. Uh, when, when the praise of the world, when the praise of the culture being viewed as being on the right side of history is our, our highest hope, uh, then we are naturally going to dignify uh, every aspect of our candidate's platform, everything that they're supporting, because they are on the side of, of right. Um, and we're not going to see 
maybe some areas where the things that they're saying, the things they're advocating for, don't line up with Scripture. That's the great danger in this, is that we might minimize important biblical issues that our candidate is wrong about, uh, that they may support some things that are clearly unbiblical. Uh, they may not support some things that are clearly biblical, but because they are they are a candidate that, that the culture that we value is saying is on the right side of history and, and wants the right things, we can be tempted to minimize um, the seriousness of unbiblical positions. And that happens on both sides of the aisle, Republican or Democrat, when we powerfully want to be seen as the ones who are on the side of right historically. Um, that then that we may minimize uh, aspects of their platform, uh, things that they are advocating for that are unbiblical. So for Christians, the great danger in elections and the great danger with both of these idols is that we place too high a value on politics and therefore uh, it hurts our witness to the watching world. We become inconsistent, right, because we want to win. So we, we say things that are not true about our candidate or we minimize things um, that are true about them that we wish weren't, right? Um, and, and so we end up being viewed as hypocrites. We end up being viewed as hypocrites because we value the culture and the praise of men too much. Um, and we actually say we believe the Bible, um, but we're not willing to criticize our candidate when they uh, advocate for positions that are contrary to Scripture. Those are two very serious idols because they create division within the church uh, and they destroy testimonies. Next week, we are going to spend a good amount of time talking about, okay, Kurt, you, you've said a lot about a wrong view of politics, right? Uh, what happens when we place too high value on politics? Next week, we're going to talk about how we should view politics, what role they do have. That's where we're going this next week. Uh, but we need to see why this issue is so important first. And so I want us to, uh, to have spent this time meditating on um, what happens when we place too high value on politics. Next week, please again join us, uh, same time, same place, uh, as we talk about a right view of politics and, and what politics actually should be used for. We mentioned last week that they're a tool uh, used for love of neighbor, and that's what we're going to talk about. So if you've got questions, thoughts, um, disagreements, snide remarks, I welcome them all. This is a super controversial topic, but our aim our aim is to glorify God in our lives and in our politics, which means we as Christians must be honest, we must be consistent, we must worship Jesus above everything else. He alone is our highest hope. Uh, he alone is, is our Savior. Everyone else is just temporary, but He is ultimate, and so we dare not betray what He has said. God bless you. Until next time.